He might have hurt his ankle or something. Okay. Arias <laughs> went over. Let's see now. now. Now he's hugging him, but he doesn't even want to look at him. No, he never looked him in the eye. And that's not often you see that. Usually, even after trash talking it. Let me uh, move this over here for now. Um, we're gonna watch. We're, we're gonna watch the post fight and um, some highlights. We already know who won, but what we're gonna do, or or who should have won. Um, right now, the 160 pound division is very deep, and to get the fruits of the 160 pound division, you have to be on HBO. You know, with Golovkin, so Canelo Alvarez, Billy Joe Saunders. David Lemieux, you know, Demetrius Andrade, and of course now Danny Jacobs, who fought a very green um, Luis Arias of Rock Nation. He just couldn't do anything with Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs just seemed two, three levels, you know, um, um, above him as far as skill. And Danny Jacobs coming off of a very highly anticipated and successful fight for Danny Jacobs and Golovkin, more so Danny Jacobs, because even though he lost the fight in the majority of people's eyes uh, against Golovkin, he still won what's considered, you know how the saying goes, you know, you can uh, win the battle but lose the war. That's what happened with Golovkin. He may have won the battle, but Danny Jacobs became so much more popular, you know, and winning the war, signing with Eddie Hearn, creating headlines, people wondering if he's still with Al Heyman. From my understanding, he's not with Al Heyman anymore. You know, Al Heyman may have helped him put this deal together, but even looking at the situation and looking at the fight, there wasn't any, you know, Al Heyman representatives there, no Sam Watson throughout the whole buildup. Now, you know, but that's that that's neither here or there. But you know, it's a lot of people who refuse to leave for refuse to believe that yes, you know, fighters can leave Al Heyman and go on to, you know, better things. Now, is Danny Jacobs gonna get better things at this point in time? Yes. Wait. Let's uh, go back and rewind back. Hold on one minute. Let me put this over here. Um, what was I doing right here? I didn't hear the car. Civil, gentlemanly, very decent Daniel Jacob. Cletus Selden, the Hebrew hammer, who is now the current star of Long cars. Island boxing. Very, very different styles. Algeri, just a boxer without a lot of power and Selden all action all power all the time and Algeria's doing very well as Jacobs nutritionist let's hear the scores from Michael Buffer well, ladies and gentlemen we go to the scorecards Larry Hazard jr. scores it 118 109 Julie Letterman scores it 120 107 and Steve Weisfeld has it 119 108 all three scores go to the winner by unanimous decision. The miracle man from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York, Daniel, Danny Jacobs. I mean, as we expected, you know. The calm, civil, gentlemanly, very decent Daniel Jacobs. Accepting congratulations from referee Mike Griffin. Final copy box numbers. He more than doubles the number of punches. And, you know, I can't wait to hear the uh, post-fight interview because I want to hear what he's going to do next. You know, he can, you know, try to get Canelo, um, um, Oscar De La Hoya, just as recently as yesterday. You know, November the 10th. This is November the 11th right now. Actually, November the 12th right now. About 15 minutes into November the 12th. Um... Oscar De La Hoya addressed the fact that Danny Jacobs could get, you know, a uh, Canelo. You know, Danny Jacobs could get, you know, a Golovkin again. Danny Jacobs could get the winner of Golovkin Canelo. Danny Jacobs could get Billy Joe Saunders, David Lemieux winner. You know, or he could try to go after um, Demetrius Andre, but he wouldn't fight Demetrius Andre. That's small change when he can fight either of those other guys for guys that I um, talked about. And even though Demetrius Andre is in the mix, you know, over there um, um, on HBO, being signed to HBO now and fighting at 160 pounds and just fought a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago. You know, he's on the outer side looking in. Let's hear um, what Danny Jacobs has to say. I'm sure he's going to say something. Also, I want to hear what Eddie Hearn has to say. It's the determined, undefeated opponent. I wasn't going to start here, but since you brought it up just now, you nodded to someone ringside and said, that's the doctor who saved my life. Yeah. Will he thank Al Heyman? I want to say a major shout out to Dr. Harder right there in the crowd. 
I love you, Doc. So how does it feel, not that this was for the title, but how does it feel now having knocked out Kid Chocolate, beaten Mora in the rematch the way you did, given Triple G the kind of fight you did, dominated this fight here in your home state, and you nod to the doctor over there, the doctor who saved your life. What are you feeling right now? Life is blissful right now. I mean, I'm living in my dreams. All I want to do is impress the fans. All I want to do is be the people's champion. I have an opportunity to do that. And with my new showcase here at HBO, sky's the limit. I said off the top of the show that this was a trap fight for you because what's, you couldn't possibly have the same emotional motivation that you've had recently given the magnitude of the fights you've had recently. And yet he did a lot of trash talking leading up to the fight. What did that do for you? It added extra motivation, but I think at the end of the day, it kind of deterred me from my game plan. Especially when I heard him early on, I realized that I could hurt him, and I was trying to go for the knockout post to listen to my corner really putting it together. But, I mean, I've been out for about eight, nine months now, a little rusty. But now that I'm here, I'm active now. I have my new promoter, Eddie Hearn. He's going to keep me active, and we're going to be able to, to sharpen our skills up and go after the best. You look pretty sharp to us ringside, Daniel. You look like a, a prime fighter, a peaking fighter right now. So you're saying that the anger actually threw you off your game plan. We were saying ringside, you didn't allow that to happen. It, it, you, you, you allowed it to make you intense without being careless. But you're saying it threw you off. Just a little bit. I think when I hurt him in the first round, once I knew I could get him hurt, I guess I was kind of lunging over a little bit to try to throw them overhand rights. But he's a crafty guy. Much respect to Luis Arias and his team. I know it was a bunch of hype and build up, but, you know, he's fighting for his family. He's the same as I. So you got to respect a guy like that. So cheers to him and his team. Though it didn't appear that way right after the fight. He came over to hug you, and you didn't look at him the first couple times, like as though there was still bad blood. I mean, this is boxing, you know. We, we, we in there to hurt each other, so it, it probably take a little bit to get it out of my system. <laughs> As I said, you look like a peaking fighter to us ringside. What do you want next? What in the immediate future, what do you want? Well, I just want to stay active. That's my thing. I just really want to stay busy. I have uh, uh, my promoter, Eddie Hearn. He's going to keep me busy in the next 2018 and the next year. And I'm just looking forward to what he has in store because I know he has major plans for me. And I'm looking forward to see whoever wants to step up. Most boxing fans would figure that there's a belt on the line, Saunders Lemieux. And that if Daniel Jacobs gets the winner there, the winner of that fight would clearly be the leading guy to fight the winner of Triple G Canelo in the rematch. Something like that? S something like that. That's exactly right. Well, we're going to we're going to invade Montreal. We're going to make sure that we're ringside so those guys see my face and then uh, call them out afterwards. I've already made it clear through social media that I wanted to fight and both guys denied me. So hopefully this performance and me being with you guys in the, in the uh, match room, they'll be forced to fight me. Glad to have you, Daniel. Congratulations. You. Jim. All right. Back ringside with Roy Jones. Okay. And Roy, Max brings up a very interesting point. Possibility of Daniel being matched against the winner of Dave. Okay. Now, see, now that's what I want to hear. Now we have a clear path for Danny Jacobs. So looking at the rankings don't really mean anything anymore. You know, so um, let's go look at them real quick. You have uh, Golovkin, who is the WBC champion. You have Jamal Charlo, who's the um, WBC number one contender. I got a chance to talk to him at Wilder versus Tavern um, a couple of weeks ago, and he's waiting on the WBC and Al Heyman to determine who he's going to fight. But here's the thing. Now, even though the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, and the WBO can order you to fight anybody, it doesn't mean the promoters have to be like, oh, man, for example, in this case, Eddie Hearn, like, oh, we got to do what the WBC says. So Danny Jacobs could be ordered to fight Jamal Charla, but he can turn that down and say, nah, you know, as he said, he wants the winner of David Lemieux and uh, Billy Joe Saunders, which is taking place on, I'm a legs itch, ah, my leg itch. Um, Billy Joe Saunders versus David Lemieux on December the 16th. He said he's going to invade Montreal and he's going to be there. You know, and what happens if Danny Jacobs, I mean, what happens if Billy Joe Saunders wins? You know, will we see the first big fight, you know, that they've done in God knows how long? I don't remember when you would see a Frank Warren fighter in Billy Joe Saunders, if Billy Joe Saunders beats David Lemieux, which I have him doing, by the way, but that's my personal opinion, you know, and a matchroom fighter, even though it's matchroom USA, you know, Danny Jacobs, you see what I'm saying?
You know, then, of course, you have Golovkin, you know, who's waiting to see what's going to go on with Saul Canelo Alvarez. But Saul Canelo Alvarez also wants the winner of Billy Joe Saunders and uh, David Lemieux, according to Golden Boy. They could possibly get the winner of that. So it's going to be interesting. And then on the on the outside looking in, as I talked about, you have a fighter by the name of uh, Demetrius Andre, you know, who is um, also in the mix and over on HBO. So one question remains is in order to get, you know, an, a, a big fight, you know, and in, you know, the mix of these uh, middleweights or this unofficial middleweight tournament that seems to be going on. What is Jamal Charlo going to do? Will we see him on HBO? And he's already stated, you know, that he's willing to go to HBO, even if it's, you know, you know, just to, you know, like come back to Showtime. But as it stands right now, you know, HBO is where it's at when it comes to the middleweights. Let me see. Is, is there uh, any highlights? You know, truth be told, it's like this. I don't really, it wasn't like a bad card, you know, because I've seen so much worse, but it wasn't like entertaining. You know, but you have to understand that it was Eddie Hearn's first card here in the United States. And, you know, he's trying to get a relationship with promoters and he's on HBO. So it, it, it all depends on how you, you know, look at it. For example, he's um slowly injecting his fighters into HBO cards, you know, even before the um, Dana Jacobs versus Louis Aries fight. When he had Luke Campbell versus Jorge Linares. You know, where um, he's got Stephen Smith of the Brother Smith, you know, Liam Smith, Colin Smith, Stephen Smith um, um, on the December, what's that, December 9th card, the Orlando Salido card. You know, he's fighting Francisco Vargas, I believe, if, that, if I'm correct. You know, so, you know, things, in my opinion, are only going to get better, but it all depends on, you know, if, if, um, um, or how aggressive Eddie Hearn is going to be and if Al Heyman is going to try to freeze him out you know, in some type of way, shape, or form. I don't know, but if he's working with Danny Jacobs and he picks his fighters, you know, the right way, which ones he's going to market, you know, which ones he's going to promote over here, then he can avoid the politics, you know? Anyway, I'm Teacher Controversy. This is Teacher Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media are right below in the description box. Please subscribe.